Good morning. As you can see, it's 5.49. I'm already packed, ready to go. I just resupplied water, and I'm hitting the trail. I'll uh, just finish the uh, stairway to heaven. It's 7.30. I've been hiking for over an hour. I've gone a mile. Of course, I left camp in the dark. Not a good move. Um, once again, I lost the trail back to the trip. I lost the trail from the campsite to the trail and kind of bushwhacked found it but ended up I was heading in the wrong direction so I ended up having to turn around I probably did an extra point one point two and then once on this trail the markings are kind of hard to follow it's very rocky I lost the uh, trail again and I did an extra probably you know a couple of hundred feet but um this part here is very hard it's a rock garden, but it's steep. It's a 900 foot climb, 900 plus foot climb. And it's not very well marked. And because it's rocks, you can't always see where the trail is. So I'm gonna continue on. Uh, some of the comments say that it's not very well marked in this section either, and it's overgrown. So I'm gonna keep the GPS very handy. Uh, those three gentlemen I stayed with last night, they stayed up. Um, very nice. Even in the morning, I got dressed and ready to go, and they came out of their tents and uh, wished me well. We said goodbye. They offered, they let me uh, take a liter of water from their bladder. I could have filled up more, but I didn't think I needed more, but I'm kind of regretting that decision now. I didn't know that I was going to be uh, hiking up a mountain and bushwhacking so much. But we're going to be on our way. Check in later. Well, I made it to the top finally after I stopped there. It's like a fall summit. You keep going up. That was probably some of the hardest uh, parts of trail I've ever done because of the lack of um, markings and the rocks at the same time in, in addition to the elevation. Not to mention I, I have to make it harder by going the wrong way once or twice. So um, maybe I'll keep to uh, daylight hiking only now or just slow down and take my time and Stop thinking I know where I'm going. Well, I made it over the top. There were some people camping there. I passed a group of about 12 hikers making their way back to Adams Gap. So there's definitely a lot of people out here using the trail. And I guess uh, in talking to those gentlemen, there's a loop over here. There's like three different trails here as well. So it gets a lot of use. Seems to be very popular. Um, they're going to the Overlook. I think McDill Overlook which is on the way toward Chiha, but I'm gonna keep going. I have about six more miles to go. I'd like to get them out of the way and get to a place in rest. Um, definitely feeling tired today after my bushwhacking this morning. So I'm gonna let you see the trail in front of me. So this is what I see on the trail um, coming down. So now it's not so bad, it's not quite so rocky. Um, definitely had to use the uh, map a little bit to find my way I got lost several times the markings sometimes they're there but you don't see them right away they're not apparent once you know where the trail is it's easy to follow but there's a couple of places where I couldn't see any markings couldn't find any trail it's all rock so there's no clear path or there might appear to be more than one because of runoff that makes it look like it could be a path as well but it's really just water has been running down there so it looks like a path so but uh hopefully that's all behind me now and I can start making up some time. Oh, I forgot to mention. It did get a little chilly last night. I think it might have gotten down to the upper 50s. And it's a little breezy today up here uh, in the mountains, which is nice. I'm still sweating, but it's cooler. So that's much appreciated. And um, once again, had a restless night uh, between sweating and freezing at the same time. You know, cold and sweating so always happy to see a blaze you know you're on the trail and uh, so but other than that it was a good night the uh, gentleman had a campfire and I was like I said I joined them I'll put some of that footage in there of the campfire and then um, uh, they stayed up a little bit later I went to sleep I tried to go to sleep and they stayed up a little bit I think around 9 30 or so they were they were out and they woke up when I was leaving so 
But um, I've seen several other people that were camping. I've passed a couple of tents. So uh, being the weekend and I guess the weather being nice, the usage is certainly up. At the top of the mountain, got a little view from this ledge here. Uh, it's kind of obstructed. I'm at mile 80.8. .8. Got about f a little less than five miles to go, or six or something like that, to make it to Chiha State Park. Uh, I know I got to walk down the uh, road, so I don't know how far that is from the uh, trail. It's very slow going. I got to say, this has probably been the toughest uh, mile mile and a half of trail that I've probably done just because of the lack of markings and the difficulty in following a trail. I mean, here I'm just following the path cut through this grass. I haven't seen a blaze in a while. There's one on the tree. Most of them are not very well marked or they're faded. And you can see the trail goes off to the right, but the tree is over there. So you know we're going the right direction, but it's not where the trail is. I really could use some more markings on here. The GPS is, uh, to me, vital because I've gone off a couple of times and I use it to just make sure I'm moving in the general direction. And I've been fortunate enough to trip over the trail or come back to it, you know, recognize it so far. But definitely got to either take your time going through here and uh, be very methodical and use the GPS. Here's some more views as I come around the mountaintop here. Absolutely uh, gorgeous day. Almost no clouds in the sky by me and no rain predicted. I'm at mile marker 81.4. It's been very hard going. This has to be some of the roughest trail I've ever hiked on. And uh, blazes are not as often as they should be. And it's very hard to see. I'm obviously gonna go to the left over here and keep following this trail, uh, it's basically on rock and on the side of a cliff, so very, very hard. It's been really slow going. I've gone 4.2 miles in three hours. It's just, this is uh, definitely brutal, and with the lack of blazes, uh, that's really some of the uh, slowdown, because I have to constantly stop, figure out where I'm at, look at the map, search for a way, sometimes double back. So, we'll see. So much for getting uh, to the Chia State Park early. I'm hoping it goes better from here. Very glad to be leaving this area here. This has been worst part of trail that I've ever hiked on. Definitely slowed me down and challenging uh, the rocks and the elevation climbs and the lack of uh, clear trail markings along with, uh, you know, an indicated path, just made this really, really hard. So, okay, with Chiha Bound, I made it to the McDill Overlook. It's mile 82.3 or four, but more importantly, here's a sign showing the state park is three more miles. Hopefully, we'll be there soon. The sooner the better. I'm uh, a little hungry, but I'm holding off, waiting for my burger. <laughs> or whatever else I get. Okay. Come to a plaque. It shows the Pinhoti Trail from Chiha, going all the way to the Bet Mackay Trail, to the AT, all the way up. So, the Duger Mountain, or Duggar Mountain is 64 miles and the Georgia State Line is 92 miles. So I'm pretty much uh, closing in on that. More importantly, I need to get right to that dot right there, which is Chiha State Park. Okay, going up a little up again. This is no doubt been the toughest part, uh, trail or portion of a trail that I've ever hiked. I think now more, I can clearly say that. It's definitely got me uh, beat. I'm just going, you know, forward, because that's what I got to do. But uh, I can honestly say that that uh, the rocks and just the climb and the elevation, the heat now, have definitely uh, stopped me. And here it is. Got 0.15 a mile left to go. 
uh, after five hours and 8.2 miles, I've uh, come here. Okay, next stop, Chia State Park. Well, I've made it to Chia State Park. Now, let's get out to business, food. And I've made it to the restaurant. We're gonna go in here and get some And here's the menu at the Vista Cliffside restaurant at Chia. Well, afternoon. It's uh, approximately two o'clock now on Sunday. I'm at Chiha State Park. I got here around noon. I was able to get a room, but you're not allowed to get into the room until 4 p.m. So I have to wait at 4 p.m. and go back and get my uh, room key and assignment. I'm assuming there'll be a long line then. Not, not looking forward to that, but it is what it is. Uh, I managed to go to the restaurant and get food. Had a good burger there and some fries. And I actually had some apple pie which was way too sweet and I couldn't finish it all. So I won't be doing that again, but I'll probably uh, get dinner there again. It took a long time to get the food. So what I'll do is I'll probably go there like around six, order, and I'll just, uh, you know, wait there in the observation level, take some pictures maybe. Um, beautiful view inside the restaurant. It's very small. I don't know if it's smaller now because of COVID, they've taken some tables out, but there's maybe like 12 tables in there, 13 tables in there. So um, it, I can't imagine it really busy here. Although um, it was busy when I got there, so I, I didn't get a table right by the windows. But it did, when I left, there was no one waiting to come in. So I guess I came around lunchtime, so it's probably one of the reasons why it was so busy at that time. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I decided to change. I'm wearing my uh, shorts and t-shirt, and I'm doing my clothes in the washing machine. I'm sitting across the road from it, watching it. So I'm gonna give it like 20 minutes and then I'll walk over there. See if I can go get that going. Um, other than that, not too bad. I got a couple of scrapes and bruises today. Took one nice fall actually on the rocks. Um, that's gotta be the hardest piece of trail I've ever done. You know, and that's not saying much, I guess, for some people. You know, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of experience, but it was by far the hardest piece of trail I've ever done in terms of uh, effort. It's definitely a hard piece of trail. I'd say, um, you know, uh, it didn't start off good either. I, when I left camp this morning, um, I kind of got lost on the way back to the trail because I was trying to not disturb the people at the other campsite. So I figured I knew which way the trail was. I was wrong. And I got turned around. I was heading in the wrong direction when I finally did get to the trail. So I had to walk back past the campsite again. Then um, somewhere down the road, also I lost the trail again and I missed the turn off, I guess. And I kept going straight because it was a road, it was a trail. And I missed that as well. But I, I didn't go too far because I knew right away I was, I'm starting to question it. I was checking the map. You really need to check a map, have either all trails or, you know, I use gut hooks. Uh, you definitely have to have that, um, you know, dialed in and, and be watching it because it's very easy to lose the trail when you're there. If you slow down and take your time, I think it works a little better, but it was definitely, um, not an easy trail to follow. You know, you just know where you're going kind of. So, I mean, even though I might have lost the trail, you kind of just head up to the top of the mountain. Even if you're bushwhacking it, you'll get there. There were a couple of places where you were actually, you know, you can't even tell there's a trail there. Either it's so overgrown or it's just rocks. So there's no clear trail because there's no dirt path to look at and see this is where people walk. You know, every once in a while I might see a um, hole from somewhere with a hiking stick. But that doesn't mean that they knew where they were going either because I know I was off trail and other people probably followed the same thing I did because it looks like it's the path to go down where it seems natural and it's not the trail turn. So they really could use uh, some new blazing there. Some of them are there, but they're really faded. They're hard to see. You know, I just couldn't see them when I got closer, but from far away, if you're looking down the trail, you don't see a blue blaze at all. You, you don't see them. It's just too dark in the shadows and everything there. So. That was really, um, I gotta say, maximum effort I've ever put forth to go on a trail. So I was glad it's over. And I figured I was gonna be here early because it was only eight miles and it ended up taking me, you know, just as long as it would have taken me 10 or 12. So, so guy's truck needs new springs, I guess. So that's it for now. I'm just waiting till I get my room. Here's the room at Chia State Park. Happy to say I got in a little bit early. Uh, they gave me the key, it's a quarter to three now. 
So first order of business is shower. So let's go take care of business. It's gonna be great. Well, it's 4.15, took a shower, and I decided I might as well go see Mount Chia, or Chiha, while I'm here. So I'm doing a half mile walk up to the mountain. Of course it's uphill, it's the mountain. Thought it'd be easier without a pack. I'm wearing my sandals, not a fan but it's pretty neat. There's camping alongside the road, as you can see. So, got a lot of families, you know, kids or whatever, all camping out here using the park. So it's kind of nice. And obviously, if you always want, there's a lodge or a cabin. Check in when I get there. Assuming the bathrooms and the showers for the campers. Love the beautiful stone buildings. I'm assuming built in the 30s or the 40s by the CCC. And still climbing up past the pavilion. More campsites. You got a playground. And there's a dog park. And there's a stone tower. I believe it's a sister one or very similar to the one at Flag Mountain where I started. I'm gonna go head toward that. And here I am at Alabama's Hamas Point, GSD Park. And I'm pretty impressed. My watch is showing 23, well, it keeps fluctuating between 2380 or so. So it's off about 27 feet, 30, maybe 30 feet. Pretty impressive. And uh, obviously it's open to the public. At least I can go in. Here we are at the top of Chia State Park Fire Tower. Look at that view. Not a lot of room in here. It's a small room, maybe 10 by 10. I imagine it gets really hot in here in the summer. But look at those views. Imagine sitting up here eight hours, 10 hours a day, I guess, watching for fire. Pretty neat. And here's the total room. You can see not a lot of room at all. Quite tight. But uh, built solid. It's rock. Okay, so I'm here at the fire tower, I guess, at Chiha State Park. And I'm gonna walk back down. I think I'm gonna go order my food now and I'll wait there and I'll just take it back to the room. Isn't that a beautiful view just walking down the path here? Mountains in the distance. Here's the view from the road and the observation area. Just more breathtaking views. Here's the view from the top of Chia State Park. You can see the river down below, you can see the trees, the mountains. As I come across, uh, you have know, this little deck here, it's beautiful. And here's the uh, dining room, the restaurant that's here. That's where I ate earlier. I'm gonna go get to order some food and maybe come out here and wait. Okay, figure I'd do a little recap. Uh, it was a really hard day, probably my toughest day ever on a trail. As I said, that trail, that portion that I went to, like from the stairway to heaven to Chiha State Park, is the toughest section of trail that I think I have ever done. Um, not that I'm a world-class traveler or done a lot of hiking, but in all the hiking I've done, that is by far the, the hardest piece of trail that I've ever done. Um, I got most of my gear spread out, and I'll show you here. A little, uh gear vomiting uh, you know it's all over the place I got my shoes and socks um, my shoes drying out with the inserts by the EC got my sleeping bag open and drying out and that's pretty much it I'm uh, gonna charge everything up 
I just picked up dinner. It's uh, 5 15. Uh, sundown is in about an hour. I don't think I'm going to go back outside and try to capture the sun going down. I think I'm done for the day. Um, I'm going to have uh, chicken tenders and fries. I was going to eat them in a little while, but I think I'm going to eat them now because I can. And I'm going to try to go to sleep early, wake up early, and start hiking again. So I got to walk down the mountain to the store, throw my card back in there to check out. Not that that really matters much. Then walk, uh, it's a uh, point one five of a mile back to the trailhead and then I'll start walking north and my next goal is uh, Heflin so I'm hoping that will take me two days my plan is to do about 14 miles or so if it's easier than the section I just did uh, I'm hoping it is and I hope it's better marked because if not um, 14 miles is gonna be hard it's gonna take me like all day um, it took me uh, till noon to do eight which usually I'm doing, you know, 10 or 12 by then, if I started early. And I started before six, but of course I did get lost. Um, that's my own fault. I'm gonna try and tape my feet up a little bit tomorrow. I have some tape left. I'm gonna use that and hopefully that'll take me till when I get to Heflin and I'll need to buy some more tape. Other than that, it was a good day. Uh, like I said, a hard day. I'm very glad to be in a hotel. I mean, I love being out there, but it's nice to have comfort. Uh, hot water, air conditioning, not be sweaty and sticky taking a shower is you know great makes you appreciate all we have and how you also realize when you hike how little you need you know i'm i'm traveling with you know 20 pounds on my back probably at the end uh you know water food almost nothing i, I was down to you know I'd, i probably have two days food if i really need it um i didn't buy much here i just bought two protein bars they really don't have they had a couple of uh, backpack there's pantry but they had breakfast, two breakfasts. Um, they had some other stuff you can, you know, microwave and probably some stuff you could add water, like ramen noodles and stuff, but I, I didn't bother. Um, I just skipped it. I'm just gonna uh, do what I do normally. I have enough food to get me to Heflin. When I get to Heflin, I'll have to buy food. More than likely, I'm gonna have to cook my food more. I don't think I'll be able to get prepared meals, but we'll see what happens there. Other than that, like I said, had a great day. Uh, great to have some that burger was great. Uh, I decided not on the salad, not to get a salad here. They have, they did have a chicken finger salad, but I just decided to go with chicken and fries. So I'm actually gonna relax now. Um, probably go to sleep early, uh, nine o'clock, maybe, maybe ten at the latest. I'm a night person, but, but I'm gonna try and get up early, uh, probably a little bit before dawn, because obviously I can follow the road down. I won't get lost, <laughs> like in the in the woods. With, with the trail, which um, that's a that's a one to definitely contemplate in the future of waiting till sun up to start walking around so you don't get lost. So unless I really know where I'm at, or I'm positive, uh, you know the trail is right there. Um, I'm probably gonna, you know, wait till sun up from now on to start walking. So, but we'll see. That'll also get better. I should have uh, paid more attention to it. Sorry, I'm doing multiple things here. I just took off my sandals. Uh, my longest walk I've ever taken the sandals probably about a mile. Um, they're okay. I'm still not a great fan of them. On the road, it was a little better. I only banged my uh, feet into something once. <laughs> so, not quite used to them yet. So, that's it from uh, the trail, uh, Pinhoti Trail. Uh, tomorrow, I pass the halfway point from my trip to Cave Springs. So, at, at mile marker 90 or 91, uh, I will be at the halfway point. So it's more like 92 and 93. Anyway, I believe there's a set of power lines. When I cross those, pretty much I'm at the halfway point for me. So that's exciting that I'm halfway done, or I will be tomorrow. And um, we'll see how it goes. Once again, uh, you know, I spoke to my family again today. Uh, can't thank my wife enough for holding down the fort while I'm gone and taking care of uh, things at home. Uh, probably eat too much today but that's probably good because most days I don't think I'm eating enough so but um I'm sure I burned whatever calories I'm eating on that hike if not the next couple of days we'll take care of it so um that's a good thing so thank you so much for joining me till we meet again